Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. In the last episode, we added the capability for the editor to compile shader code using DirectX Shader Compiler. The main reason for doing this is that shaders are used together with textures to create a material which will be applied to a submesh for rendering. Since we are going to construct materials in the editor, it makes sense that it's also able to compile shaders. Now that we have done the shader compilation part, we are going to add the material asset type in this video. Before we start, I'd like to fix a small typo that I made in the previous episode, where I renamed the element type enumeration and had to update the geometry editor's code. This should be a static normal instead of skeletal normal. You can see here that if I run the editor, the textures are missing in the primitive mesh dialog. After fixing the typo, the textures are back again. Thank you Charles for pointing out this typo. Okay, now, as we saw in the last episode, we have a method for creating a default material, and it does that by compiling vertex and pixel shaders first for the material. I already added comments here that outline how we can pass the shaders to such a material. The next step is therefore to add a material asset class. Let me close all files except this one. I'll add a new file in the content folder that will contain the material class. It inherits from the asset class, which has a few abstract methods that we need to implement. There's also a non-default constructor, which I'll update a bit later. The default material can be accessed using the default property, but it's also fine to use default material property in default assets class. We could use a list of shaders with as many elements as the number of shader types. Here I use the dictionary instead. That way we don't have to waste space for shader types that we don't use for the material. Next we have properties for the material type and material mode. Material type is used in the engine to determine the render pipeline settings. At the moment, we only support opaque materials. Material mode is only used by the editor and is important for construction of the material. We'll start with the default material, but later we'll add a material editor that can construct materials either by writing shader code or by using a node-based approach for non-programmer artists. Looking at the material definition in the engine, we see that it has a material surface which contains various properties of the material that can be used as constants for the entire object. These are used when there is no texture for any one of these properties. We need to be able to set these in the editor, so I'll add a class for this as well. It's simply the same properties, defined in a way that can be interacted with using WPF. I'll also remove the ambient occlusion, since it doesn't really make sense as a constant and it's just a waste of memory. We use 1 as the default value for the ambient occlusion in the shader code and remove it from the per object constant buffer as well. I'll quickly test if everything is still working. 
Looks like I forgot a semicolon here. Okay, now we can continue. Let me add the emissive intensity and set default values for each property. The base color has a mid gray color, emissive color is black, and the intensity is 1. The metallic value is 0 by default, and it's obviously not a color, but a floating point value between 0 and 1. The same goes for roughness, which has a default value of 0.9. We want to save this along with the material, so I'll add the usual from binary and to binary methods. Actually, let me first write the to binary method, so this makes more sense. In order to save these, we write each channel of each property separately as a floating point value. And the from binary method is the same thing, except now we read the data. As we'll see later, we also need to copy the data when we use materials. So here is a clone method. And that's all for this class. Like I said, each material has material surface parameters added here as a read only property. In order to support textures, we have to define input assets for materials. To do so, I add a base class that only has a name property. This is the name of the input, like base color or ambient occlusion. And then I add another class that derives from it and adds an asset property. I'm not sure if we really have to do this in two steps, but let's go with this design for now. Using these classes, we can add another class for default material inputs. In Primal Engine, the default material is a PBR material, and therefore it'll have the usual PBR textures as its inputs. However, it's also flexible and can be modified to use more or fewer inputs depending on the shading model. Like I said in the previous video, all of this code is a bit sketchy and I'll probably change it later depending on the final design of the material editor, which we obviously don't have yet. So if any of this looks a bit ambiguous, it's because I don't know yet exactly how it's going to fit together later. Anyway, here we have the default material inputs class with a list of inputs and two methods to add or remove inputs. There are also two methods for writing and reading the data to and from binary. The constructor simply adds the default PBR texture names to the list of inputs. As I mentioned, we'll also have materials that are defined using a node graph or only shader code. I'll add two classes as a placeholder for those here as well. The material asset contains a property for all of these, and we'll select which one is used depending on the material mode. For example, in order to get material inputs, a switch is used to call getInputs method of the property that corresponds to the selected material mode. We can't import materials since we need to construct them in the editor, but we need to be able to save and load material asset files. So I'm going to implement these next. Again, it's better if I write the save method first, so the order in which we read data makes more sense. First, if a file exists with the same name and asset type, then we use the GUID for that file instead. Next, we need an icon for this file. Ideally, we would like to render an object using this material and use a screenshot of that for the icon. 
However, at this point, we can't make such a render, so I'm going to use a checker image that we use for the texture editor's background. Of course, feel free to use any image that you like for this. Now we can write the asset file header, which contains the information that's common for all asset types. Next, we write the number of shaders that are used for this material. Then we get all shader groups and call their two binary methods in order to write their content. We looked at these methods in the previous episode, so feel free to watch those videos if you haven't already. Finally, we write the material type, material mode, material surface, and inputs. Later, we'll also save the node graph and the shader code, if any. Well, the shader code is also saved with the shaders here, but I can imagine there will be more stuff in here to save. At the end, we return a list that contains the saved asset file name. When loading a material asset file, we use a binary reader to read the data in the same order, starting with the asset file header, followed by shader count, shader groups, and so on. Since the shaders dictionary is private, we need to have a method for adding shaders and another one for accessing the shaders. We probably also need to be able to remove shaders, but let's do these first. The load method should return a value for all code paths. Now we can create a new material asset file for the default material during startup. All we have to do is uncomment this code and run the editor. Here we see again that shaders were compiled and we see in the log messages that the default material was saved. Looking in the default assets folder, we see that there is indeed a new asset file which we can copy to the content folder of our project. Here is the material asset with the checker icon. Unfortunately, we don't have a material editor yet and we can't open it. Almost forgot to uncomment this as well. And with that, we are at the end of today's video. In the next video, we are going to create a class for uploading assets to the engine. As always, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.